Let's look at microkernel as a design pattern. Um, the context is you've got several applications use similar programming interfaces that build on the same core functionality that may be deployed on several different platforms. This, that's the essential characteristic uh, of this microkernel is that you may be deploying this application or whatever it is on several different platforms. Right? The problem is that the core functionality is fairly stable, but the connections to the outside world or the devices, whatever it is, are not stable. They could change. The forces, the applications in your domain need to support similar but different application platforms. Yeah. The applications use the same functional core in different ways, and the core must be converted to run on the different platforms. And fairly obviously, you want to do the least work possible because the more work you do, you know, you've just got to debug it all again. So the, the less you can change, the better. The solution is to encapsulate the fundamental services of your application platform in a microkernel component. The less, the better. The microkernel includes functionality that enables other components running in separate processes to communicate with each other. It also is responsible for maintaining system-wide resources such as files or processes. In addition, it provides interfaces that enable other components to access this functionality. It becomes the, the controller of things and um, I think it's the uh, sequencer of it all. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of people read microkernel and think, wow, this is great, and start offering up a microkernel architecture. And it doesn't need it. it. And it turns out it's not a microkernel architecture at all. Microkernel is useful when something must be able to be ported to different platforms. This is the kind of thing you have when you're dealing with, um, say, uh, meters or, or um, uh, machine interfaces. Uh, the application itself, the controller, uh, the overall controller, such as a, a vehicle control system, is likely to be reasonably stable. But you have no, no uh, say over which device the component manufacturer uses to control their thing. So the brakes might be uh, done differently by the different manufacturers. Um, and you have to be able to, to deal with that different device driver uh, each time. Now, one of the ways of doing that is to have this um, microkernel, where the whole point about the microkernel is that it is the microkernel that interfaces to the actual uh, device controller, because it has control. Now, it may call on services that are not included in the microkernel. Um, the microkernel handles the scheduling and uh, threading and all that sort of stuff. All right. Now, portability is not required. If you don't need to port your uh, particular application to, uh, to different platforms, then you're probably better off using a layer uh, pattern. I did come across a fairly fabulous diagram that, that illustrated really what the problem of a microkernel is or what, it's, what solution it offered, and it's, it's sitting there. You have a monolithic kernel based on an operating system. Now, Operating systems, some parts of them run in kernel mode. It's a very privileged mode. It's also a very dangerous mode. A microkernel reduces the size of that kernel by reducing what's included in it. But it will call on other things to provide the overall services. The point being, you've got this small little microkernel that is the bit that must be implemented on the CPU chip um, provided. Right? And the smaller that is, the better. So this is where the microkernel originated. I think the well, the first one I think was in uh, Unix because Unix, the Unix operating system, had to be ported to a number of different platforms. It was fairly famously uh, implemented also on um, Microsoft Windows NT when NT existed and it was different from Windows. But it's there. It's mostly an operating system um, architecture, and it's it really is very much for when the system has to be implemented on different hardware platforms.